Welcome to using the terminal on macOS. I'm Philip with Real Python, and in this video course, I'll give you an introduction to the terminal. The terminal can be intimidating to work with, especially when you're used to working with graphical user interfaces. Even though you can do many of your day-to-day -day tasks on a computer with apps that contain a graphical user interface, you may need to open the terminal at some point when you're learning Python. And yeah, the terminal really is an important tool for you as a Python developer. But granted, at the beginning, it's hard to figure out how to navigate this dark space. To show you how to get started using the terminal, I invited Martin as a guest today. Martin will get a bunch of tasks from me that he has to perform in the terminal on macOS. He really has to perform all the tasks in the terminal, so there will be no mouse, you'll see no windows except the terminal window, but there will be files, there will be folders, and of course, there will be some Python in it as well. And here's what we'll tackle in this course. You learn how to open the terminal, how to create files and folders, how to navigate the file system, and then you'll learn how to show contents of files and how to edit, copy, and move them. And of course, you'll learn how to run Python files in the terminal. If this is your first encounter with the terminal and you're feeling a bit nervous right now, I promise you that Martin will do a wonderful job of explaining things. And even if you're already a seasoned terminal user, I promise that you'll learn a thing or two. But before we begin the conversation, let's get a bit of theory out of the way in the next lesson. This is a lesson to give you an introduction to some terms that are helpful to know when you're talking about the terminal. Of course, I didn't want to miss out the chance of calling these terms terminal terms. Early developers used computer terminals to interact with a central mainframe computer. These were devices with a keyboard and a screen or printer that would display computed output. The personal computers that you're using today contain a different architecture. Still, you can find a terminal application to interact with your computer on a basic level. These terminal applications are called terminal emulators. As the name suggests, they are emulating the computer terminal. However, nowadays when people talk about the terminal, they usually don't talk about the old school computer terminal, but terminal emulators. Same goes for this course. When we're talking about the terminal in this course, we're actually talking about the terminal emulator. There are two other terms that you might hear now and then in combination with the terminal, command line interface and shell. Command line interfaces allow you to interact with an application or program through the terminal. You execute commands and see their output. A shell is a program that provides an interface with specific commands to you. To bring it all together, the shell provides the commands that you use in a command line interface, and the terminal is the application you run to access the shell. And these were the terminal terms. But enough with the theory for now. Let's hop into the main part of this course and do some work with the terminal. Now we are on macOS and Martin will show us how to use the terminal on a Mac. Hi, Martin. Hi, Philip. So first, I would love to see how you open the terminal on a Mac. So what I do is I press Command and Space, which brings up Spotlight. And then I just type Terminal. And you see, it's already a suggestion here. So when I hit enter, then it opens up the terminal for me. Okay, perfect. So Spotlight is basically like the, the big search on macOS. Alternatively, you could go into your apps and get it from there. But with Spotlight, you're basically safe to find the terminal. And what opens up is a little window. So yeah, maybe you can make it full screen, zoom in a little bit, because currently it looks a bit small. Sure. This is really tiny, and you might also see yours pop up in, in white. There's a couple of different themes. I just have it set to dark, but now I'm going to increase the size, go into full screen, and then also amp up. Whoa. Perfect. All right, so I should be able to see the writing well now. Now that you're in the terminal, there is this little tilde sign, but where are we? When it opens up, I think you usually start in your home folder. You can see which folder you're in by typing PWT, which stands for Print Working Directory. 
And you can see that I'm starting off in users, Martin. This is my personal folder, home folder. Okay, so depending on our viewer's name, there might be a, a different name there or the name of your computer yeah. that you are using. And I think the, the first really important thing to understand is basically you can think of it like you are navigating the Finder on macOS, that you are at some position in your system where you can click around and stuff like that. But with the terminal, you don't click around, you use your keyboard to navigate. And now with uh, PWD, you showed what's our current position. And that's always good. It's one of these commands that you can run often when you do something because it's helpful to know where you are when you want to navigate or do something. That's true. I think it's always helpful to know where you are in life, <laughs> on vacation. <laughs> the first task, or basically it's the second task now because you, you already, or the third one, you already opened the terminal. Oh God, uh, you showed wow. me the, the curtain. Like, I'm crashing this. <laughs> 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 and you showed where we are. So now I want you to create a folder named pb underscore terminal. You can create it wherever you want. I'll just stick to where I am. Okay, so I make this folder by typing the command mkdir, which stands for make directory. And then I put in a space and then type whatever I want to name the folder. So in this case, your task was to name it pb underscore terminal. So I just do this and press enter again. And then I created the folder. Perfect. So if I, like now we have uh, have an underscore in the name. If we wouldn't have a underscore but a space, you then would put it in quotes, similar like a string in Python, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to go like this. I'd have to say PB terminal, like that. Exactly. But I'm not going to make this folder now. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good thing to, to remember that it's, it's basically like a chain of commands there. So you need to have quotes if there are spaces in it. But I think mm -hmm. also similar like with variables in Python, you can think of the names of folders. You save yourself headache if you don't put spaces in there, mm -hmm. which I think is a good idea with folder names. You don't want me to prove that I actually created this folder? You just believe me? Well, I believe you. I mean, would there come an error or how would you prove to me that you created this folder? Like, I, I just believed you, but like, I, I can like uh, <laughs> can see you proving it to me. There was no output, right? So I don't know. It's Maybe it's interesting to know that you, you don't get an output when you create a directory, right? Like it's it doesn't tell you anything there, but I can list. Um, I'm skipping ahead here, am I? I could well, just I mean, uh, move into that directory. What do you think about that? Let's move into this directory. Okay. Let's first, that, that might be an interesting uh, part. So if you would cd, the change directory command, mm -hmm. into and now try to use a name that doesn't exist. Like, for example, like with the quotes and pb space terminal. Okay. Because I want to see like if the terminal is just like ignoring stuff or giving you an error. Okay, cool. There we see the output that no such file or directory as pb space terminal so okay so if you're changing into the one with underscore now and it works then so cd is for change directory and that means essentially clicking like you you want to go into a folder yeah pb underscore terminal and then here i am cool after i moved into the pb terminal folder you now see that here in blue it says pb underscore terminal and that's a default i think on the z shell which is the default shell that you get on macOS. And before you also had this blue thing, but it was a tilde symbol. And this tilde symbol also tells you where you are actually, because it's a placeholder for your home directory. So this tilde stands for slash users slash and then your username. And now, since I moved into a different folder, it now gives me the name of the folder that I'm in. Okay, cool. So maybe you can use the pwd command again to show the path where you're in right now. Sure. So I type again, print working directory. And now you can see that we moved from users slash Martin, my home directory, into PB terminal, which is a subfolder of my home directory. Perfect. So you created a folder now. Next, I want you to create a file. And I think we name it hello underscore terminal dot pi. So we make a Python file. Terminal. .py. Okay, so I used the touch command to create a file. Again, I don't get any feedback, but I can always check what's in my folder by typing ls mm -hmm. to list the contents. And now after creating this file using touch and then the name of the file, 
here it is, helloterminal.py. And with the touch command, you're creating an, an empty file. You, you could also create a text file or a markdown file. And for now, it's just a blank file that has a .py ending. And mm -hmm. yeah, to really make it a Python file, let's, let's put some Python code in it. Maybe a, a print hello terminal. Sure. Before I do this, I'm going to do a different command to just clear the screen, which is just clear. And that brings me back up to the top. So it's a bit easier to see what I'm typing. So nothing happened here. If I scroll, you can still see like everything's still there. It really just moves the screen to the top so that you have more space to type and see what you're typing. Cool. Perfect. That's handy. Yeah. Uh, your task was to add print hello terminal into this file, right? So my file yeah. is still here. And then I will say echo. Then I need to use the right quotes. Print hello terminal. And there's, you want a comma in there? Sure. Maybe let's, let's put a comma in there. Let's be correct. Exclamation mark. Okay. I said I have to use the right quotes. That's just because I want to use double quotes in here in the string for Python. I could also swap this around. So I could use hmm. double quotes out here and then single quotes inside. Perfect. So that's basically like within Python, Python code as well. Mm -hmm. That you have to be cautious of your quotation marks. And if I just ran this like that, actually, well, I'm going to take a little detour. Sorry, Philip. No, go for it. Well. <laughs> this is just going <laughs> to print it out. You see, like if I say echo, it's a command. It's kind of like the print command in Python. So it prints it to the terminal. So this didn't put it into the file. But if I say, give me this output, whatever I put inside of the quotes here. So for me, this is print hello terminal. And then I want to put it inside of a file. For this, I can use this symbol. That's the greater than symbol, I think. Greater than, yeah. And then give the file name where I want to put it. So I say hello terminal and then press enter. 